So we're bringing Vega 56 back with the power mod, the 242% power offset. This card doesn't have any stand-up ability that we had previously. If you remember the power offset, it blasts the card with way more power than any stock or aftermarket configuration will allow for. And in doing so, allowed the Vega 56 card to surpass Vega 64 when we tested it originally. The test today is whether or not it can beat the RTX 2070 with the power mod. Because it's $370 to $400 for this thing, as $500 to $600 for the 2070. So can we mod this to a point that it surpasses the RTX 2070? Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the limited edition foil graph logo shirt. This four color foil shirt uses the iconic GN graph logo with average 1% and 0.1% bar colors. It's printed on a soft, high quality and custom made 100% cotton shirt and is available on store.gamersnexus.net until stock runs out. Once it's gone, we will not be making more of these shirts. We sold out within two weeks of our previous limited edition shirt. So click on the link below to pre-order now. Here's what we're doing. If you missed it originally, there is a mod you can do, not even a difficult one, for the Vega cards. And that mod is to change the registry. And you can do a registry entry change for power play tables on these cards that allows for the power target offset to exceed the initial 50% stock uh, up to whatever you want. We set 242%. We worked with Buildzoid on this probably about a year ago when Vega came out. And doing so a year ago allowed us to fairly easily match Vega 64 and even beat it when it was overclocked in some scenarios. You could do the same thing to Vega 64, so it's not head-to-head, -head, but you get the idea. And then there are other mods, like just straight BIOS mods, VBIOS mods, where on the card you could more or less unlock some of the frequency voltage targets that you get on Vega 64, though we didn't apply that here because uh, we weren't 100% positive if the BIOS options we found online were going to be trustworthy, and also we have to send this card back anyway. So what we did instead is just use the power play target, uh, and that allowed us to get so much power into Vega 56 that it can be the RTX 2070 in some scenarios. The only trouble is the power consumption is massive. So we have some charts for you today that are going to be gaming performance, and then after the gaming performance, you can see what the power cost is, and I will note this as well. If you want to do this mod on your own, technically, you know, if it works, and it, it does, it does save a bit of money for the same performance level, ignoring the power aspect. What we don't know is, does pushing an extra couple hundred watts into the core kill it over time? And if it does, how quickly? So we wouldn't really recommend doing this necessarily because we don't know the long-term impacts for your hardware, but it's still a really cool experiment to see if you can force Vega 56 into beating the RTX 2070, which is significantly more locked down. You would have to do hard mods to get a similar overpower target that we did on this with just a registry entry. So let's get into it. We'll do the charts. As always, there'll be a link in the description below for the full testing methods and the article if you prefer that. But let's start with Sniper Elite 4. Sniper Elite 4 is one of the best modern API implementations and leverages asynchronous compute command queuing to use hardware more efficiently without getting stuck waiting for as many synchronous instructions. At 4K high, we found that the stock Vega 56 Red Dragon card performed around 55 FPS average with the stock RTX 2070 at 64 FPS average. That's a market lead, but one which we can take away. By allowing an uncapped power target of 242% on the Vega 56 card, and by pulling down significantly more power, we outperformed the RTX 2070 by, well, it's within margin of error. They're about the same, really, at 63.8 FPS versus 63.6 FPS average. That is well within our error margins, but we can still call it a victory. We've minimally managed to match the RTX 2070 with Vega 56, the latter of which costs about 370 to 400, while the RTX 2070 costs 500 to 600. For reference, Vega 64 ended up at around 62 FPS average when stock, and so we're able to perform around that level or just past it with 56 as well. F1 2018 is next. At 4K and ultra high, this one places the reference Vega 56 at 49 FPS average when stock, compared to the stock RTX 2070 at 60 FPS average. That's a lead of about 22%. The power color Red Dragon model operated faster though at 52 FPS average, closing the gap marginally already. And when overclocking power colors of Vega 56 card with a massive power offset of 242% maximum power with about a 1710 MHz plus or minus 10 on the core, we surpassed the RTX 2070 card 
by about 5.2%, reaching 62.7 FPS average. That's a tremendous jump of 28.5% over the stock Vega 56 card, that's the reference model, or 20% over the Red Dragon stock card, possible only through this mod. For perspective, the Vega 64 card performs at around 59 FPS average when left to stock settings. The RTX 2070 does outperform 56 when both are overclocked, to be fair, reaching a new height of 68 FPS average, but this gap is significantly smaller than the stock to stock gap of the RTX 2070 and Vega 56 cards originally. Even though the RTX 2070 is able to outperform Vega 56 with an overclock, we still have to commend the performance of the Vega 56 part. Further mods like Tobias might gain us an additional overhead on the memory primarily, and again equalize the score, but at this point the power is way over 2070 usage, but we'll look at that after the game benchmarks. At 1440p, the stock power color Vega 56 Red Dragon landed at 88.5 FPS average, a market gain over the stock Vega 56 reference card. It's still significantly behind the stock RTX 2070, which performs at 102 FPS average, leaving the Vega 56 Red Dragon to be outperformed by about 15% stock to stock. For reference, the Vega 64 Strix ran at 96 FPS average, pushing Vega 56 with our PowerPlay Tables mod resulted in a frame rate that again surpassed the RTX 2070 card. The modded Vega 56 pushes 104 FPS average with significantly tighter frame time consistency than the RTX 2070, a result of never running into power perf cap, and it pulled ahead by about 2%. That's a remarkable feat for a card that costs so much less, considering the RTX 2070 costs $500 to $600 again. Still, overclocking the RTX 2070 allows it to gain on Vega 56 by another 10 FPS, to be fair, but that's becoming difficult to notice for the end user, as frame rate is already so high. But also, power is more noticeable, and again, we'll talk about that soon. We're not saying this is the best approach, given the insane power draw and the mod we're doing, but we are saying that it's pretty damn cool to be able to push a cheaper card this far ahead with some tuning. For perspective, here's a look at frame time consistency at 1440p. Remember, lower is better, but more consistent is better than lower. This kind of plot is far more valuable than frame rate, as it gives you a truer representation of what you're seeing. We're looking at frame to frame interval, or how long it takes each frame to be drawn after the previous frame. Vega 56 is significantly better in this particular title than the Nvidia devices, which may just come down to game level optimization. It's not always true. This is true for both the stock and overclock 2070 cards, where you see that the increased frame time consistency on Vega 56 is represented by its lack of spiky lines that you're seeing on the 2070. And that's something that can be seen in gameplay to some extent as well. Finally, at 1080p, the Vega 56 card measures at 104 FPS average on reference, or 115 FPS average for the power color model. This allows the power color card to reach 1070 Ti levels of performance, although its low frame time performance is measurably better. The stock RTX 2070 ends up at 136 FPS average, and the massively overpowered RX 56 Red Dragon ends up at 134 FPS average. It's not bad, but it does show that we're running into other limitations at 1080p for Vega 56. Frame time consistency remains superior for the Vega cards here, and somewhat noticeably so. GTA 5 is less exciting. At 4K, the Red Dragon 56 card ran at 35 FPS average, with the RTX 2070 at 48 FPS average. That's a lot of ground to gain, and it just couldn't do it. Even with the power mod, the Vega 56 card ended up at 40 FPS average, still behind the 2070's 48 FPS average. Overclocking the 2070, out of fairness, the gap widens to 53 FPS average. Looking instead at 1440p, the Vega 56 card pushes 80 FPS when modded, improved over the stock Vega 56 Red Dragon score of 70 FPS. The RTX 2070 still holds a lead at 89 FPS, though, with the overclock 2070 at 98 FPS average. No hope for Vega 56 to pass the 2070 in this older DX11 title. Let's move on to the next game. Far Cry 5 is up next, and at 4K high settings, we measured the RX Vega 56 Red Dragon stock card at 41 FPS average, right around the 1070 Ti and behind the 1080 FPTW. Modded with the power offset, Vega 56 surpasses the Asus Vega 64 46 FPS average by a couple of frames per second, landing at 49 FPS average on the Red Dragon. This allows power colors Vega 56 to beat the RTX 2070 by marginal gains at 49 FPS versus 46 FPS, while still maintaining tight frame time consistency. To be fair though, the RTX 2070 is equally smooth in its frame throughput in this game, Overclocking, the 2070 does allow it to surpass Vega 56 once again, but by similar margins to Vega 56's passing of the stock 2070. It's at 51 FPS average versus 49. Again, this is pretty damn impressive for the Vega 56 card, although it is definitely way out of spec. At 1440p, the Vega 56 Red Dragon measured at 74 FPS average, a measurable improvement over the 69 FPS average of the reference card. The RTX 2070 ends up at 84 FPS average, and is just barely beaten by our modded Vega 56. Again, we have to be happy with the results of this mod. 
Power is another story, one that's pending momentarily, but the performance is impressive. At 86 FPS average for the Vega 56 mod, we're looking at a significant uplift over the stock performance. As expected, the 2070's overclock allows it to retake the lead at 93 FPS average. At 1080p, Far Cry 5 becomes CPU bound at the absolute high end, but dodges this complication with the parts we're testing today. The Vega 56 reference card is decently behind the power color model, plotting 98 FPS average instead of 104. Power modding Vega 56 gets us to 120 FPS average, a remarkable climb of just over 20%. The RTX 2070 is within margin of error, plotting 118 FPS average. Once again, we've managed to minimally tie or marginally outpace the RTX 2070 with a modded Vega 56. And also, once again, if you're willing to mod the Vega 56 card, you're probably willing to do so, uh, at least a simple overclock anyway, on the 2070. This overclock on the 2070 gets it to 128 FPS average, but the gap is again much smaller than previously. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is last. It's a significantly newer title that is awaiting full RTX support still. At 4K and high settings, we measured the Vega 56 cards at 35 FPS average and 38 FPS average for the stock and overclocked variants, respectively. This is a letdown and allows even Vega 64 to remain in the lead. Changing to 1440p, we see the same performance stack. Vega 56 ties with 64, which is good for other reasons, but it does not meet the 2070. We've got a mixed bag for performance overall. So here we go then, we're getting into the power measurements here, and for power, we logged power during the entirety of our benchmark passes, and this is important, we're doing total system power here instead of current clamping the cables because there's power through the socket as well and AMD and Nvidia have different policies for how much power they draw through the PCIe slot. And that is why we're doing total system draw because we don't have a better way to clamp the PCIe slot. So we're going to total system draw here, but it's logged and we synchronized the runs so that you can compare run to run the different SKUs of cards and see how they do. And, and that should be pretty useful here. So uh, also, all voltages on the board, the motherboard, are completely controlled, so there's basically zero variance there. It's, it's all in the video card at this point. For Ashes of the Singularity, you can see our power consumption across multiple passes, including the peak total system draw at the most intensive parts of the pass. The Vega 56 mod pushes up to about 600 watts total system draw during this stressing part of the benchmark, while the stock Vega 56 card peaks at around 400 watts. We're pushing about 200 watts more with the power offset in the mod, that's a huge amount of extra power going to the core. As long as the VRM is well cooled, and assuming the VRM is a decent one on the Vega 56 PCB in question, the VRM should be fine. What we are unsure of is how much the Vega GPU can take for how long a period of time. For this reason, we don't necessarily recommend this mod. It could kill VRM components if not done carefully and on good PCBs with decent cooling, and we don't know what will happen with the GPU after a long period of time with this much power. For the RTX 2070, that's around 300 to 315 watts total system draw during the heaviest load of the tests. Because the card is so power limited at all times, thanks to Nvidia, including only a 14% power offset on the $500 model we're testing, the maximum power draw on the OC test never exceeds 357 watts. On average, it is closer to a 330 watt peak draw. The rest of the games follow a similar pattern, so we'll leave that here. The RTX 2070 clearly has a power consumption advantage when stock or overclocked, with the overclocked version drawing slightly less power than Vega 56, although it is largely insignificant here at 397 peak versus 357 peak, it's the modded 56 that clearly loses in all power consumption needs, period, unless your goal to outperform the RTX 2070 also includes heating the house. And again, while this isn't something we'd really recommend you do, it's, it's kind of impractical because we don't know the long-term impact of pushing an extra 200 watts into the core. The VRMs can pretty much handle it if you don't buy a garbage card. So that makes it partly impractical. It's still really fun though. The cost benefit is convincing on 56 and mostly it's just fun. It's a lot of overclocking. So you get way more headroom. We're pushing over 1700 megahertz on the core and it can go higher. In the past, we've pushed it higher with liquid. So in the past we did in excess of 1720, approaching 1750 megahertz, if I remember correctly, for a liquid cooled Vega 56 card. So if you get a, a really well cooled 56, you have nothing to worry about on the VRM. It's just that core, uh, and we'll perhaps leave Buildzoid to, to speak to that if he has any thoughts on it. But uh, other than that, Vega 56 is capable of beating the RTX 2070 stock, and it can get pretty close to the overclock 2070 when you blast it with over 200 watts more power than the 2070 and 200 watts more than the original Vega 56, which was already drawing more than the 2070. So whether or not that matters to you is part of the equation, but it's more of the longevity. Either way though, it's a lot of fun to do and it's cool to see Vega can perform so well. 
right now is actually, this goes back to our review of the 2070 where suddenly, now that Vega is available again with the death of mining basically, Vega is looking like a good option. 64 is not a card we've ever really liked because you can do this to 56 and get up to 64 levels of performance, but it's still, it's, it's about the same price as the 2070s on the low end. Sometimes it's cheaper. So it's worth looking at the numbers and figuring out if you want to consider AMD at this point. We've been talking about exclusively Nvidia for months now because everything's come out at the high end. And AMD gets no reference at the high end. 2080, 2080 Ti, 1080 Ti doesn't matter. AMD does not compete there whatsoever for performance. So Nvidia dominates that market. And because they dominate that market, you kind of start forgetting that AMD exists in all markets. Uh, so anyway, the 2070 did decently at $500. We have a review on it if you're curious. But this is just to say, you know, maybe remember that Vega exists. Uh, we did like 56. We never liked 64, though. The price proposition was not there. Uh, but if the 1070 Ti start going away and we're left with just the 2070s, then suddenly it might be worth considing. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. As always, go to store.gamersaccess.net to pick up our limited edition Graph Logo foil shirt. Once they're gone, they're gone. We're not going to reorder them. And you can go to patreon.com slash gamersaccess. Top that directly there. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. I think that was pretty good. That's pretty convincing.